Okay, now look at that. I tried blending so fiercely that it ended up in my hairline. Work. Hey, hey, welcome to my video. If you're from my Instagram, I love you. And if you're not from my Instagram, love you all the same. So today I created this makeup look. We're going to be playing with makeup. Some new to my collection, some old things that I've tried but have forgotten about and I'm going to try again today. And I'm also going to do a little fun tutor boot at the end just to let you know whether or not the products are worth buying and trying. But basically, this is the vibe that we got from today. Now, whether this was easy or difficult to create, I'm not gonna say you're just gonna have to watch and find out, but we also kiki and chit chat a little bit and have fun in this video. So if that sounds like your vibe, then please keep watching. Okay, so as you can see, as per usual, my eyebrows are done and I'm just gonna move on to eyeshadow base. And then I'm gonna start with the eyes. And now, something surprising today is that I'm not starting off with the P. Louise base as I normally do. I'm starting off with a NYX eyeshadow base. And the reason I got this, honestly, it's just because it was recommended to me by a friend. She said that she loves this for the summer, that it really makes the eyeshadow stick and not move at any point, even if you're sweating a lot. Which, to be honest, I've been friends with that girl for a while now, and when do you sweat? Like, I'm just gonna confront you directly, girl. When do you ever sweat? But okay, I mean, that's neither here nor there. I chose to buy this product and try it out, so... Let's see if I'm gonna be making a very angry call after this. Okay, work, so the primer is on. Now, to be fair, my eyelids do feel quite sticky, so this might just do something. But let's see, so I'm just taking a fluffy blending brush and running a sort of soft brown through my crease. And as you can see, I'm mostly patting this on. It's sticking on pretty well. Now let's see how it blends out because that's kind of a concern since this really does feel sort of uncomfortably sticky. So I don't know how the eyeshadows are gonna blend out, but let's see. And so far it blended out kind of fine, but I do notice that it is a little harder and more difficult to work with. So, okay, I mean, give and take, I guess. I'm just gonna apply that same shade to the outer part of my moving lid. And now I'm also gonna pat on a sort of winged shape. So kind of like this, it doesn't have to be too precise. You know what, honestly, this primer is kind of giving. I was very skeptical and honestly kind of still am. I'm wondering what working on this eye is going to be like since this eye is way more tacky and dry at this point. But so far, pretty decent. Okay, so now I'm repeating the same step on the other eye. By the way, I'm using a mix of two palettes for the eyes today and I'm going to be using the Nimia palette and the ColourPop X Barbie palette today. Love both of those palettes, but that's not what the focus is on today since I already reviewed both of those separately. Ooh, okay, so something that I'm noticing right now, right over here in the inner part of my eye, that primer is sort of starting in a peel away in a weird way and if you have this primer and you want to play with it or you want to purchase it i would definitely recommend literally doing one eye at a time because this is now kind of annoying but i mean it's okay i still made it work regardless now i'm gonna move on to my second shade so with a small detailed blending brush i'm moving on to the shade sassy classy from the nimia palette as well and i'm just applying that to the very outer corner so kind of like that again it doesn't need to be too precise and so far so good no problems with the primer on this eye now let me see what this eye is gonna give okay not bad no problems on this side anymore either so okay using my last shade from the nimia palette and i'm not even gonna try and pronounce that because i just i don't want to offend anybody okay but it's the darkest shade and i'm just applying it literally to the very outer corner being careful not to cover the previous shade completely. And now same on the other eye as well. And then we're gonna slap on some shimmer and call it a day basically. Okay, now actually before we move along to the shimmer, I'm gonna follow the natural guide of my lower lash line right here. And I'm just gonna apply some foundation along that imaginary line going up because I really wanna cut this shape and make it sharp and perfect. So now to make it extra sharp, you can skip this step, but I don't like to, I just, 
wipe it away with a q-tip so as you can see this is the difference between that eye and this one what if i just left the other eye as is what would you do okay small thing to note here as i'm wiping away the foundation i'm noticing that there's some leftover eyeshadow primer that i applied here earlier and it's very difficult to take off my friend really wasn't kidding but also like it shouldn't be this difficult you know what i mean so now i'm just drawing that same line again except this time i'm not gonna wipe it away i'm gonna blend it into the skin and it's gonna make it extra sharp that's what i'm looking for here okay so shimmer and then we're done with the eyes so i'm dipping into shade 1971 from the malibu barbie palette it's sort of this like sunset shimmery orange and i love it it looks so pretty and as you can see i'm leaving an empty little spot right in the outer corner here because i'm gonna use an even lighter shade right there and that's where i'm gonna apply shade cali girl from that same palette and obviously with the same brush rush i'm trying to give like a sunset type of moment today since all i've been doing recently is like shimmery browns and golds i think because summer is coming that's my usual go-to but i want to do something a little bit different today but then again almost pretty much the same so okay almost done all i'm gonna do is just line right next to my lash line using that darkest matte shade this is just gonna make my lashes look fuller so that's really the effect i want i'm not really going for heavy eyeliner here okay so before i I move on to the face finally i'm just applying some eyelash primer to my lashes i never skip this step literally and by the way don't you worry i am gonna apply a little something to my lower lash line as well some eyeshadow just to balance all of this out but i'll do that after i have my foundation on and everything okay work now also let me pin my hair back so first of all i'm gonna start with the primer and i have this giant pore blurring primer by makeup obsession like Look how big this thing is. So I'm just gonna apply some with my finger to basically all the areas that I believe need it. What if I just, what if I just went like this over my whole face? No, I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna apply it around the nose and T-zone area. So, so far this feels really nice going on. To be perfectly honest, I can't really tell whether or not it actually blurred my pores, which is kind of the point, but I mean, I guess we'll see later. Okay, so now moving on to foundation. So I wanted to try this one since my last video where I tried new makeup, and if you haven't seen that, you can watch it here. But anyway, this is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Foundation, and I just wanna show you this applicator. It's kind of like a concealer. So I am gonna use it and I'm just gonna dot the foundation all over my whole face basically Now I have no idea how pigmented this is and what the coverage is like So I mean this is either gonna be giving full coverage girly or it's gonna be a very natural glow We'll see but anyway, I'm gonna be using my beauty blender to blend all of this out I am gonna be spraying it with some setting spray and then trying to blend everything that was a NYX setting spray that I'm trying out currently. Ooh, okay. The coverage is really honestly pretty decent. And this seems to be my shade, which is good, although I have not met a foundation shade that has not oxidized on me just yet, I don't think. Oh god, I'm so I'm so Casper the Friendly Ghost Pale. But we're gonna fix that with bronzer and a lot of blush, so hopefully it won't be this noticeable. Okay, so I like the look of the foundation. Mm, I'm noticing my pores right around my nose, so that pore filling primer really did not do its job. But I mean, I'm not that mad about it. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna clean above my eyebrows a little bit and then apply foundation to my forehead. Okay, so I did notice one thing. I applied some of the NYX eye primer right around this area. And now that I tried to blend that in with my foundation, it's caking up and it's looking really bad. I don't think you can see it on camera, but I'm gonna have to wipe this away and, you know, try again. Okay, see, this is the best I can do. Otherwise, the product keeps moving around. In real life, like, it's not that bad. I just look like I have a dry patch of skin right here. But I mean, for what? I don't know, moving on. So for concealer, I'm gonna be using my regular Maybelline Superstay on any pimples or any areas that I feel like need a bit more coverage, particularly this disrespectful discoloration around my nose. But for my under eye circles, I'm gonna be using the Estee Lauder Double Wear Concealer. Now, I love wearing this one on its own when I'm really not wearing anything else on my skin because for how much it covers, it actually looks pretty natural. So I'm happy about that, but for some reason, every single time up until now that I've tried it out in combination with any type of foundation or anything, it's not my favorite concealer. 
So I'm gonna see how exactly I feel about that right now. Okay, so this is it fully blended in and on camera It might actually look super full coverage and flawless, but in person It's definitely missing something. I feel the urge to slap on more Maybelline concealer on top of this. I don't know why. Also, I have officially decided that I hate the eyeshadow primer because now there's a lot of buildup right here. Let me get closer so hopefully you can see it. The struggle is so, so real. Oh my goodness. I also feel like I'm really pulling on my eye to really get this thing off and somehow it's still not coming off, so. But let me get closer and show you now. I fixed it a little bit, but I'm giving up, girl. Okay, so right now I'm just gonna do my bottom lash line a little bit. I'm just smoking it out slightly so it could match the top. Okay, so there we go. Let me move on to bronzer and blush now. So for bronzer, I'm using this contour stick by Maybelline and I'm just gonna apply it to a brush and then apply that to my cheeks because it really blends out way more beautifully like that. And this is a product that I used to use a lot when I was younger and I think I used it once maybe in recent years. And so every time I get back to this product, I go, now, why do I ever stop using this? Because it's genuinely just really good and super affordable, so. Now, going back to the Estee Lauder Double Wear Concealer, I just love the way it dries down. It almost sets itself. It dries down so beautifully that I almost don't want to set my under eyes, and I absolutely always never skip that. But I'm gonna set my under eyes today because you guessed it, I have a new product to try for that too. Okay, so now I'm also gonna warm up the forehead, or five head, if you're me. And obviously, I can't forget the chin twins. Okay, so now I have this Lovely Cosmetics Bee Bread Loose Powder. It's like a banana shade, which is what I normally set my eyes with anyway. And first impressions, this smells like coconut, I think. Why is it called bee bread and there's a little bee on the packaging, but it smells like coconut? I will never understand, but I mean, work, I love coconut. So I applied some to a tiny beauty blender and I'm just applying that all on my under eyes. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush and just dab that into the skin. And you know what? I really do like that. It did brighten up the area, but I don't look dry or cakey in any way. Just smooth and filtered, so that's great. Girl, also, why did nobody bother to tell me that I have like 2006 concealer lips in full effect? Let me wipe that away, that's so embarrassing. Okay, now that I look less dehydrated, we can move on. Okay, so we're moving on to blush, one of my favorite categories, and this is a makeup obsession blush stick. Actually, it's a lip and cheek duo, but I mean, I'm gonna use it as blush. So I'm just gonna apply some directly to my brush and then on my cheek. That has a nice little pigment to it so far. Ooh, okay. Oh yes, for sure, yeah. So as you can see, that's definitely very pretty and pretty pigmented. I don't know why I was surprised by that. Like, I was expecting nothing, literally nothing, from this blush, and to be honest, from this brand as well, but... Okay, so now while I'm at it, I'm just gonna use some of that setting powder that I used earlier to just cut my cheek a little bit. Okay, so that's done. So all that's left to do is just finish my nose contour and apply some mascara, and I'll be right back to do the lip with you guys. Okay, so here we go. I also put on a little bit of highlighter as well, as you can see, because there was also nothing new to showcase for that category either. But now we're moving on to the lips. And first of all, I'm gonna use a lip pencil by NYX, and I'm gonna slightly overline. So this is a beautiful warm brown shade, as you can see. And I've used NYX lip pencils before, but I just haven't bought one in a long time. I don't know why. Again, I think it's because the market is oversaturated, and we always tend to buy new stuff and then forget about the stuff that we liked, so... But I just recently saw this at the drugstore and was like... Huh, I remember I loved those, so let me get one. Okay, and that's step one. That pencil was so easy to work with, I loved it. Now I'm just gonna take a sort of nude shade and just blend the edges of that brown. And then on top of that, I'm gonna use this Trixie Cosmetics Lip Oil in Gingerbread Cookie. And not only does this look beautiful, it feels super nice. 
It also tastes amazing. And I said what I said. Me at the house eating this as dessert work. And I mean, look how pigmented that is for a lip oil. This is one of my favorites. Okay, so let me let my hair down and we can have a little quick tutor boot before I end the video. Okay, here we go. Starting off with the NYX eyeshadow primer boot. It's it's so difficult to work with, it is not worth it. Next, the Revolution Conceal and Definer Foundation. Toot, for sure, I actually really like it and I think it looks pretty nice on. The Estee Lauder Double Wear Concealer. Toot. I personally, if I'm doing full glam like this, would need just a tiny bit more coverage, but I didn't do it and I still look pretty decent, so definitely a toot. The Maybelline Contour and Highlight Stick, toot. This is an oldie but a goodie for sure. This Makeup Obsession Pore Blurring Primer Boot, it really didn't do what it said it was gonna do. On the other hand, the Makeup Obsession Cheek and Lip Duo, toot for sure, I look super cute and fresh. The NYX Plump Finish Setting Spray, toot for sure, I actually really like it. And then the NYX Lip Pen and honestly, for that matter, all of their lip products are perfect, so obviously, too. And last but not least, the Lovely Cosmetics Bee Bread Loose Powder. Honestly? This is pretty cute and not cakey in person, so two for sure. And that's it. That's all of the products, and this is the look. Let me know how you like it down in the comments below. Honestly, how it started... It definitely ended pretty good, but that's all for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!